everyone. Kevin here with a little addition to Wine 3 Lab, a video about calculating additions to wine. We often have to add things to wine, for example, acid in the, in the United States. If you work overseas, you might add sugar to wine. And we, of course, add sugar in class if we're making wine from concentrate. But we also add sulfur dioxide to wine. We add yeast to wine. In all these cases, we have to calculate how much to add. It's not too tough if you break it down. And I break it down into three steps. Here are those three steps. One, how much do I have to add per liter? So if we're adding acid, we'll figure out how much acid we have now, what our goal is, and then what the, di the difference between what we have now and what our goal is, is how much to add. And we usually do that per liter. We'll talk about that in a sec. Second thing, so that's the first thing. Second thing is how many liters do I have? So how big is my tank or how big is my carboy? And then all you gotta do is multiply how much to add per liter by the number of liters and you've got your answer. So it's really that simple. So the, tip, the, the tough thing oftentimes is figuring out how much to add. Let's talk about that first. It's helpful, I think, to get a, a feel for the ranges of different components of wine. For example, sugar at harvest in juice is going to be, say if we're at 24 degrees Bix, bricks, that'll be at about 240 grams, and that is per liter. All right, now, if you instead had residual sugar in wine after fermentation is done, that is about two grams per liter. So the yeast consume 238 grams of that original juice and leave behind two grams and that's your residual sugar in wine. Now what about acid? Acid, say, is around six grams per liter. And in all these cases, there are ranges, but I'm just simplifying. So if you, if you get these numbers in mind, you start to know relative values. You start being able to easily compute things when people are throwing out numbers in the wine world. What about sulfites? Sulfites are a lot lower. Sulfites, we talk in terms of parts per million, like 30 parts per million. So 30 parts per million is milligrams per liter. So if we're talking per liter like we are here, we might be talking about sulfites around 30 milligrams, all right? So milligrams, that's one one thousandth of a gram, all right? So if we're talking about six grams of acid and only 30 grams of sulfites. Sulfites are obviously a lot lower. Acid's a lot lower than our beginning sugar. A little acid goes a long ways. Six grams compared to 240 grams at harvest. 30 milligrams of sulfites obviously goes a long ways as well because it's a very low number and that's all we need to protect our wine. So, if we, once we know those values, how much do I add per liter? So let's take an example. Let's say my titratable acidity, I'll just abbreviate it TA, equals 3.5 grams per liter. And say I believe that I need to bump up my TA to a goal of 7.5 grams per liter. Now, that's a big difference, right? The difference is 4.0 grams. And that would be an awful lot for a winemaker to add in California. So you probably won't see an addition of four grams per liter. But I've heard of winemakers adding as much as three grams per liter as their all-time high. So say we were at four grams, just hypothetically. That's per liter, so that's how much I have to add per liter. Pretty simple. 
So then step two, how many liters do I have? So say I have a tank and say that tank is 10,000 gallons and say it's full. Well, what I need to know is what is that in liters? So all I have to do is multiply by some conversion factor. And you can go out and Google and you can say, Google how many liters in a gallon. And Google will give you the conversion factor for whatever units it is you're dealing with. But here we're dealing with volumes, so we're comparing liters and gallons. Liters would be the metric measure of, of, of volume. Gallons would be the English me measure of volume. And if you look at that, look up that conversion factor, it turns out it's 3.78 liters per gallon. Boom, so all we have to do is multiply 10,000 gallons by 3.78 liters, and what do we get? That would be 37,800 liters. So in the prior slide, I said I wanted to add four grams of acid per liter. Now I know I have 37,800 liters, so all I have to do is multiply the two. So 37,800 liters times four grams per liter, and that gives me the amount of gra the grams of acid I need to add. So let's see, if we did the math, that'd be 148,000 plus 100, I think if I'm doing this right, it's 151,200 grams of acid. And one of the things I do when I'm at this point is I always, I always ask myself, is this reasonable? All right, big picture, step back and say, okay, is 151,200 grams, does that make sense if I'm adding four grams per liter? Well, I've got about 40,000 gallons of wine, 40,000 liters, sorry, of wine. All right, I'm rounding up to make the math easy. And I'm adding four grams per liter, so four times 40,000 is gonna be 161,000 grams. So my 151, yes, it makes sense. If I looked at this 151,200 and I said, no, wait, I'm expecting 100 and... If I, if I said I'm expecting 160,000 like I am, then 151 is pretty close. If I had written 151 grams instead of 151,000, and I went back and said, wait, I'm expecting 160,000 and I only wrote 151, I would know that I was wrong not even in the ballpark, right? So is this reasonable? That's a key thing to ask. Give it the smell test and see, does it make sense? So that's, it's that easy, really. How much do I add per liter? And how big is my volume? Let's do one more complex example, and this is yeast addition. So what makes it more complex is we usually quote yeast additions in pounds per gallon. So the typical rate of yeast additions is two pounds LB per 1,000 gallons. Now, oftentimes in wine, we deal in liters. We deal in the metric system. And so we would, we would based on my little formula there, the first thing you want to do is figure out how many, how much do you add per liter? And usually the addition is in grams per liter. All right, so we have a problem here. Our measurement of weight in this case is pounds, and we need this to be in grams. And our measurement of volume is in gallons, and we need that to be in liters. All right, we already know how much we're adding. We're adding two pounds per thousand gallons, right? So we know really how much we're adding for a certain volume. But what I'd said in our little formula is we wanna know how much we're adding per liter. So in this case, we wanna convert pounds to grams and gallons to liters. All that is, is the use of two conversion factors instead of one, like we saw previously, all right? So I can start with my two pounds 
per 1,000 gallons. And I just need two conversion factors. The first one converts grams to pounds. And if I look that up on Google, it'll t Google will tell me that it's 454 grams per pound. And then I need one more conversion factor, and that's to convert gallons to liter. And we've already seen that. It's 3.78 liters per gallon. And so then you just do the math. And if we multiply this through, I'm going to pause, I'm trying to pause this recording so I can do the math and come back to you. And it turns out that that is 3.43 grams per liter. So what do I ask myself? Is this reasonable? There's two things I check to see in this case to see if it's reasonable. I've done a lot of conversions here with throwing in two conversion factors, right? Conversion factor one and conversion factor two. So there are a lot of units being thrown around here. So the first thing I do is to see if my units cancel. And units will cancel if you have the same units in the denominator as in the numerator. So there's pounds in the numerator and that cancels pounds in the, de in the denominator. And then I have grams here that doesn't cancel anywhere oh but look at this i screwed up i have gallons here and they don't cancel because i've got gallons in the denominator too so i screwed this up there you go so that's a good reason to ask is this reasonable let's do it over two pounds per thousand gallons times 454 grams per pound times my second conversion factor, which I need to invert. I need to say one gallon per 3.78 liters. Now do my units cancel? Well, pounds in the numerator there cancel with pounds in the denominator. Gallons here in the denominator cancel with gallons in the numerator. And now, what am I left with? I'm left with grams per liter, and that's exactly what I'm looking for, right? I'm looking for grams per liter. So now, I just have to do the multiplication, and that comes out to a really different number. It comes out to That comes out to 0 0.24 grams per liter. Okay, so the second thing I, the, the other way I check on reasonableness is just to think about whether the number is reasonable. I already checked to see if the units cancel it and I found my error, but let's check and make sure that our numbers look reasonable. So I'm looking just to convert two pounds per thousand gallons to grams per liter. Well, when I'm doing a reasonable check, reasonableness check, I usually round in a big way. So in, for example, pounds, one pound equals 454 grams. I would round that to 500. So two pounds is gonna be about 1,000 grams, given my rounding, right? 500 grams per pound. 1,000 gallons, I'm going to round gallons to about 4 liters. 1 gallon equals about 4 liters. So I'm rounding from 3.78 up to 4. So 4 times 1,000 gallons would be 4,000. Uh, I'm sorry, 4, four times 1,000 gallons would be 4,000 liters. All right, so I'm rounding to get to this number. And it's easy to see that equals 1 quarter. Right, the number 1,000 over 4,000 equals one quarter, and that equals approximately 0 0.25. And what's my number? 0 0.24. So now I know I'm reasonable. All right, if this came out to be 25,000 instead of 0 0.25 or something like that, then I would know that I screwed up my decimal place somewhere. All right, so 
I've done my two checks to see and now I know that this number is reasonable and I'm probably right. All right, let me show you one more complex example on the next slide. Okay, gang, one more example, a more complex example, adding sulfites. So let's go back to our original little scheme. I figure out how much to add per liter, how many liters do I have, and then I multiply the two. So in the case of adding sulfites, I often know how many parts per million I want to add. The winemaker is going to figure out, or you're going to figure out, how many parts per million of sulfites to add. And as we go forward in the, in the class and talk more about what sulfites mean, you'll get a better intuitive feel for that. But let's just pick a number for now. Say we want 30 parts per million of sulfites in our, in our wine, okay? Well, we know 30 parts per million, we've defined that as 30 milligrams per liter, okay? So that is, that's how much to add. We've got our number, how much to add per liter. The problem is this number is sulfites, and so we're gonna add potassium metabisulfite instead of sulfites, all right? So we just need to, a conversion factor. So let me write this a little differently. Let me write this as 30 milligrams per liter that way and see if I can erase here on my slides. Oh, my eraser doesn't seem to be working, so I will just cross this out. So I have 30 milligrams of sulfites per liter, and I just need to convert that to potassium metabisulfite. So it's simply another conversion factor. So we know that for every one milligram of potassium metabisulfite, we have 0 0.57 milligrams of sulfites. Remember that was our conversion factor that we talked about in class. So now my units cancel. I had milligrams of sulfites here in the numerator. I have milligrams of sulfites in the in the denominator and so now I just do the math and I think if I've if I have the math correctly this comes out to 56 milligrams of potassium metabisulfite per liter okay so all this is is just applying one conversion factor to answer the first question in my scheme which is how much to add per liter Okay, so now I've got how much to add per liter in potassium metabisulfite, which is what I'll actually add. So if I add 56 milligrams of potassium metabisulfite per liter, that gets me 30 parts per million or 30 milligrams per liter of sulfites themselves. And we'll talk about how you, how, what, what potassium metabisulfite is and how it becomes sulfites. But for now, just think in terms of one milligram of potassium metabisulfite becomes 0.57 milligrams of sulfites. And all this is is applying that conversion factor. And then you can go ahead, now that we've got how much to add per liter, you can go ahead and do the rest of our formula. Okay, we'll leave it there, gang. Thanks for listening, and I will see you in class.